God be glorified. We are going to read Isaiah 14, verse 1 and 2. Verse 1 and verse 2 of Isaiah 14. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will choose Israel and settle them in their own land. The strangers will be joined to them and they will cling to the house of Jacob. Then people will take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel will possess them for servants and maids in the land of the Lord. They will take them captive, whose captives they were, and rule over their oppressors. They will take them captives, whose captives they were, and rule over their oppressors. I know we like those kind of things, but it didn't say go start telling God, come and make a captive of someone else. But has any situation taken you captive? I like what the scripture says. What does it say? Everything that rises against you is not by God. And he says they will fall for your sake. But that is if you hold on to God. What if you refuse to hold on to God then? That kind of thing is not applicable to you. But I say God will again have mercy on Jacob. And will choose Israel and settle them in their own land. What has taken away your rights in life? What has taken away your positions in life? What has taken away your health? What has taken away your marriage, your home, your children, every kind of thing, your endeavor, your finances? What is it that has become a problem to you? Such unsolvable problem. You know, at the point in time, Israel had gone out of their territory into exile. Does anybody choose to go into exile? No, there must be untoward situations before you go into exile. Even in the days that a man wakes up from his home and runs away, why would he run away? Because circumstances are not what they should be. He goes into what is called voluntary exile. That's a tough thing to do because he never expected to go and live elsewhere except in his home. But this other situation is a situation where the children of Israel had gotten themselves into trouble by the way they acted towards God. And the only thing that was left was for others to come and oppress them and take them away as slaves. And there are circumstances in life, situations in life that has enslaved us because of the lives we have lived. It is easy to blame the enemy, but sometimes we have to look at ourselves. What did I do so that this kind of thing comes upon me? What made me deserve this kind of situation? Some of us are in exile in our own homes. What I mean by that is... You live in your own home, you live in your so-called territory, but everything has taken over everything, and you are just there for the sake of being there. But thank God for today, because God has arrived to us in a new dimension. He said, we'll settle you again in your land. You know what it means to settle in your land? You have become in control of your territory. Not that you are there and somebody is in control of you. So many of us live the lives that others control. But today, that thing is coming to an end. God is going to give you a life of your own. He says, settles you, puts you on your own trajectory. You are no longer answering to another person. You are no longer living a life of response. So many people live like that. Whatever he's being told to do, he responds to it. Whatever is directed in his direction, he responds by collecting. Everything is by response. No, God is saying, I am going to establish you. And establish you in such a way that some people will come to ask, what is going on here? Not like the scripture that says that God has done a new thing for them. Even their enemies being the ones that are testifying. Because when God will do some wonderful thing, it will come to a point that somebody starts to ask, what happened? And I like the end of that matter. He said they will be joined to the house of Jacob. They will be joined to the house of Israel. Why? Because I've seen what God has done. Let God do such a wonderful thing for you that some other person decides to become a Christian. And that's my prayer for you today, that God will do such a wonderful thing that even the fellow who never would have looked for God will look for God because of what he has seen in your life. That's the kind of change I am talking about. And that's the only point at which you are talking about your, cap, your captor becoming your captive. 
the one who made you a slave, becoming subservient to you. Because God has so elevated you beyond what anybody would have thought about. You know the thing I am saying, sometimes you look at it and it looks like, well, it's a picture that is being painted of not reality. For some people, that's the way you would think. But I like to say that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, behold, I am the Lord, I change not. Whatever he did then, he's still doing today. And he will continue to do until this world ends. When you read a scripture, you hear somebody's testimony, it is happening, it is true. It's not fairy tale. And does God single you out not to allow his own mercy and loving kindness to come upon you? No, he has not done that. Just hold on to him. Some people will say, I've held on to God for so long, nothing is happening. Wait, your time is coming, he's going to do it. And I am speaking to somebody today whose time is now. The time to settle you in your own land. God defines that land for you and settles you in it. And nothing shall by any means threaten you or uproot you from there. Nothing shall come around again to influence you negatively, to take away your rights and to rule over you. It is time for you to be the ruler. It is time for you to be the head, not the tail, not even the one in the middle. And you remain the head always, every day of your life. For God has an expected end for you. That's where he's taking you now. Father, thank you. For you have come to us with this word today that you are going to restore. That you are going to settle us in our own land. Father, define the land for everyone whose heart is yielded towards you. And let them be beneficiaries of this word today. Let the enemy be the one to say that God has done a new thing for them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen.